are up at Saratoga. You are watching Saratoga Saturday. Exclusive coverage every Saturday of the meet. Only on Pass the Wire TV. Tracking trips from Pass the Wire and the Pick 6 King, John Stetton. As your handicapping partner, John is your second set of eyes on the past performances, replays, numbers, trips, and more, helping you find the angles and plays others miss. Each week you get expert analysis, smarter ways to press your opinions, and the keys to cashing bigger tickets. Tracking trips from Pass the Wire, Give yourself an edge and partner with a pro. Get a second set of trained, experienced eyes. Join today. Membership has its benefits. Thank you for visiting Pass the Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PassTheWire.com. Number one is Mo Donegal by Uncle Mo. And they're off in the Remsen. As they come on for the finish, and it's going to be tight here in the Remsen. Mo Donegal. Mo Donegal bearing down on the outside. It's Mo Donegal and early voting, and it is Mo to win the Wood Memorial. And it will be Mozanago to win the Test of the Champion, the Belmont Stakes. Well, hello, everyone. Here we are on another lovely weekend coming up at Saratoga. And we're going to be covering a couple of races there with Race Lens. Um, sorry I wasn't here last week. I had the COVID. So, um, but I'm back. So if I... Get a little scratchy throat now and then. I guess you'll you'll definitely know why. But let's just get right into it and check out these races. And then we're going to try to see if we could hit a pick five there at Saratoga on Saturday. First, we're going to start with the uh, Lake George. And here we go. And in Lake George is race number 10. And um, the one horse here, look at this horse. Uh, according to Race Lens, this horse, the trainer, uh, in the last 30 days is at a win percentage at 27%. Very nice. It's a great, that's great there. You know, look at this horse's last time out going a mile on an eighth. Uh, today we're going a mile on the turf, so uh, cutting back a little bit there. But uh, look at this horse. Got some steady uh, speed right there. Sits right there pretty close overall. Um, this horse could be a little bit of the early pressure or sit right off of the leader. So he's that type, or she, she's that type. I'm sorry, not he. She, it's a she. She's that type of horse that uh, could sit really close. Um, unfortunately, the time before that, she didn't do very well. I think you could just first you're going to have to toss that one out. And she was eased up, and uh, but she came right back and finished a, a pretty decent third, if you ask me. Um, so she has got some talent. Um, she ran in a grade three last time. Uh, she is a little bit of a price horse, 15 to one. We have Hernandez aboard, excellent rider, as we all know. Um, and if you look at, uh, over here, the projected ratings here, her early pace is 96, middle is 86, and then her late pace is 96. So she does take a little bit of a good breather in the middle. So she's going to be part of the pace, pro, you know, so let's keep an eye on her. <clears throat> is she a major player? Maybe for that win spot, but I think more on the, the place and show, probably more or less. I like to see a little bit more out of her, but she's definitely got the talent and to do some damage in this race. The two. Oversubscribe. Um, 
first of all, it's Chad Brown, Rosario the board. As you well know, that combination, both when they team up, 27% wins. But here's the big, big plus. ROI, return on your investment, a big plus 34%. That's excellent, especially with Chad Brown. Most of the time, people jump all over Chad Brown's horses no matter what, bring them down in prices. And, of course, Rosario always is a, a top rider, and no matter where he's uh, riding. Um, race lens angles here. We've got a negative and a positive one. Uh, this horse uh, won last, uh, last race as the favorite. Success coming out of that is a 5.5 on that. <clears throat> Pretty good, if you ask me. Uh, decent horse here. Look at this last time out. This horse uh, in a smaller stakes. Uh, one pulling away, come from behind, and that's what they're, they were. The negative was about that they think this at this track, especially probably at this distance, a mile, it's going to be hard from a come from behind her. Um, I'm one of those. If you're a good horse, it, it, as long as you're not a lone speed, it, you're okay. If you're coming from behind, um, this horse definitely does come from behind every time it runs. So she is definitely a closer, a major closer. Is she a contender for the win spot? Um, for me, no, but definitely going to have to look at this horse from exotics. And I would not try to talk you off this horse if you're falling in love with this horse and the way this horse sets up for this race. So definitely a contender. Mama Gold. This horse last time out finished second, ran pretty much, pretty much even overall. Stumbled at the start. Um, we have in this race, this horse, uh, the trainer Todd Fletcher gets twenty one percent in the last uh, thirty days, uh, which is pretty good. You got John Velasquez aboard. Um, no slouch there when it comes to riding. And we don't have no angles on this horse. This horse, you look back on this horse, that last race, if you look where it was running at, the UAE it was running at, you know, three wins in a row. Um, then came to the, the States here, ran a very decent second, especially after stumbling at the start. And just kept going. So John Velasquez has now got to know her a little bit better. Um, you got some uh, since since June sixth. You got some steady workouts there. July thirteenth, the fifth, the July fifth, and then June twenty eighth. Very nice little pattern there. I don't care about this how fast she does her workouts. Just as long as they're a good pattern. And if you really look at the way this horse runs overall, even though she was running pretty steady that stumble probably shocked her a little bit and um johnny velasquez probably probably pushed her a little bit to keep going because she didn't want to you know doesn't want her to fall behind and get startled that way um most of the time she has a very good kick most of the time she runs around 90 90s in her ratings so that's very good um is she the top closer probably not I think she's more of a pressure horse. I think she's going to be sitting there that second or third spot. And for me, is this horse a player for the win spot? And my book, definitely, for sure, this horse is one of those players for the win and should be definitely looked at. The four, Via Via Via, via the new V. Sorry if I butchered that up. Wow. Um, this horse, they got a negative here, and I'm sure it's because it was come from behind horse. Yeah, sustained pressure up. Uh, this horse comes from behind uh, most of the time. Um, let's see how she does in her last few races here. She uh, finished third last time out in a grade two, going a mile and an eighth. They're cutting back, of course, today. She is a little bit of a close. She does very well. She was closing on a seven and a half for a long turf on a small stakes. 
And then she broke her maiden closing ground on the mile. So, yes, she's definitely a closer. Um, is she this caliber? You know, um, I would have a hard time seeing that, that she's with this caliber right now. Eight to one. I would, if I was going to bet on this horse, I would like to see much higher odds. Uh, for me, best for this horse right now, because even though she finished third in a grade two, I would like to see a little bit more out of her. But she's for the gimmicks, more on the bottom side of my exotics, you know, plays. But for the win or place column, not for me. I'm sorry. The five. Gala Brand. Well, uh, this is a price horse. Let's see the angles here. A couple of negative angles, mainly because she's come from behind. Formed second start after a layoff. Was out of the money. That's not a good sign. But she is a horse for the course, and that's a good that's a good sign for a good angle of a 5.8 uh, success rate. Here's the big key to this horse right here, if you look at it. Uh, pretty much runs in the 80s all the way. Does she have enough oomph for this group? I'm going to say no. Uh, but there is a big but. I think she has a shot here of closing the ground doing something very special here but for me it's more on the exotics for the supers and tries um i think the horse does have that kind of talent but for the win in place right now i'm going to take a seat back on this horse for that i'm going to wait and see how she does in this race if she does pretty good like a third or a fourth or even a solid fifth or sixth you know i want to see something coming on um, then I think she could probably handle this group a little bit better next time out. The six, sweet Rebecca. Okay. The, this horse has a lot of talent. Uh, she's run in some, uh, stakes races before she had, she finished fifth last time out. Not too bad, but she went, was running up front. She bobbled at the start. She went three wide. She had a lot of problems there. Um, Chad Brown, Tyler Gaffleon. Tyler Gaffleon's running lights out right now. Uh, last last 10 days, he's at 17% win. Um, Tyler definitely knows this horse all three times here. Ran with this horse. And Chad Brown, ROI on the last 30 days is a plus 8%. Got to love that. So is this horse a contender in this race? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think she's a contender. I think you got to look out for her. Uh, there's a, another horse in here. I think it was the three we were talking about that would be another one that would be very um, good um, and watch out for. But um, definitely has some talent, has a negative angle here. But that's because, once again, coming from behind. Do we have enough speed in this race to come from behind? I think this horse could sit a little bit closer than what the angle is saying here. The last two races goes up pretty close. She did, like I said, she bobbled up there at the first quarter and uh, she went wide and then she bumped and she went four wide at the quarter pole. I mean, a lot of things happen to this poor horse. I know it happens to all horses at one point. And, but uh, I'm going to just excuse that last race. I think she's got a lot of talent. Definitely a horse to look out for and watch out for the number six. The seven. De uh, Grasso. This horse has done everything right the last three times. Won three times, already got the hat trick. This horse has uh, won its last race as a favorite. That's a great angle. Horses moving up in class, though, today. Uh, won a lounge race. Won a, a nice little small stakes races, too, back back. Can't blame these people for taking this uh, shot here. Uh, the, all her connections here. If I owned the horse, I would like to take a shot here at this type of race. Uh, especially with her having a, that type of speed that could sit very close or might even go to the front. Who, who knows, excuse me, who knows 
but she does have that kind of speed to be right there. And with her having three wins in a row, she's the now horse. She believes in herself. Looks like the connections are believing in her. And so why not at least take a shot? But for me, in this race, I'm going to have to sit back and watch, see how she can handle this this type of group, this grade three, um, and see how she can handle it. Uh, but I definitely would not throw her off a lot of tickets. Definitely put her in some exotics. All right. The eight, Pounce. This horse has some speed. Um, this is going to be one you're probably your, maybe your leader, one of the leaders. Uh, last time out, she went out and just, just gave way right at the end. Uh, she faded at the end in the small stakes. Even in a grade two, she went out in front or went close to the front. Couldn't handle that group. Grade three, she did a little bit of different tactics. She came back, come from behind. So I think she's a little bit of a versatile horse. She probably is one of those type of horses that, you know what, if she doesn't break well, you know, the jockey has some options, especially if they could keep her close either way. So I see her either A, if she finds herself on the front, she could just go on. If she doesn't quite break the best, she could probably sit second or third. Or even if she gets back there fourth or fifth, she could, as long as she sits really close, she might make what they call the pounce, because no pun intended for her. Uh, but um, Mark Casey's the the trainer. He, he gets 23% in the last 30 days. So, and Davis Dillon, look at what he's done in the last, uh, let's put the last 10 days, 21%. But here's the big one. ROI plus 170. That's plus 170% on your return on investment. Davis, uh, D Dylan Davis is on fire here. So look out. And he's, on, he's a New York boy, so why not look out for him? So is this horse a play? Maybe. Uh, more on the exotics for me. But if you want a long shot or a horse that, especially if he goes, if this horse goes off around 10 or 12 to 1 and you want to do a little long shot, a couple dollars to win, this might be the one. It might be the one you want to take a little shot at. Lemon Muffin. Everybody knows this about this horse probably, most likely. Dean Wayne Lucas is your trainer. Um, he has been ice cold, though, of late. Uh, the last 30 days, 0% wins. So uh, he's got to get hot again. Uh, this horse, the last couple of times, has really do not done well. She has basically ran even at best. Um, but she's been going up against some big guns, especially when she's met Thorpedo Anna, which is going to be in the next race that we're going to cover. That's a big monster. She's been beat by that horse a couple of times pretty big, unfortunately. Um, I do like uh, Santana taking over here. He might get a little something extra out of her. He's a, a very good jockey. Um, he's probably underrated in a lot of ways, but, um, and he, and of course they have the angle here for this horse is because she comes from behind and is she going to get it done, especially at a mile? If it was longer, I might say she, I, I would probably lean towards her a little bit more than I'm going to even say, but for me, not today. Uh, I got to see a lot more things coming out of from her. And then plus Lucas has got to get at uh, least look warm again for him to get going. Um, he's an excellent turner, as everybody knows. He's, a, you know, Hall of Famer. So um, I don't want to say nothing negative about it, but he's just cold right now. And you know what? A lot of trainers go through that, and that's just the way it is. <clears throat> the 10, Magic Cross. Here's another horse with a little speed here. Um, could find herself on the lead. Could even come from behind. Um, it's one of those horses, eh, you don't know which one she's going to do because she came from, she sat really close on the pace on our maiden and then tore, you know, just annihilated them. Then she ran even on a grade three. Cannot knock her. She ran a very good race. I am sorry. She ran fourth in a grade three. It's fine. She held her own. And then she won a small stakes race, wire to wire, on the, well, it was supposed to have been on the turf. But, uh, look, 
course has got talent. Don't blame them for taking a shot here. Bill Mott, trainer, we already know what kind of trainer he is. Excellent. He's got a 22% in the last 30 days. And the ROI for him in the last 30 days is a plus 33%. Junior, the writer, last 30 days, ROI is a plus 41%. Excellent. And here's the angle from race lens. The horse won last time out as the favorite, which is a great angle. They come back with a success of 5.5. Is this a horse player for the top spot? Hmm, possibly. Uh, for me, i rather have this horse more on the exotic side, this uh, show, or, you know, or even a trifecta. Uh, but it's definitely a play, especially at 30 to 1. It's another one that if you want to throw – couple of dollars across the board this horse might get loose and might never see um, anyone else come up on her the 11 also eligible golden degree here's another one if she gets in gonna have some speed but she just broke her maiden two back she did annihilate them in her maiden um gotta see what the big difference was there oh because she finally got stretched out it looks like I think she likes going a little bit longer with her speed. She more she has more or less of what we call router speed instead of sprinter speed. There's two different things. Um, Linda Rice, uh, she's always hot in New York. She's she's been doing pretty good, especially in the last three days. Sixteen percent cooled off off of her uh, the Belmont at Aqueduct. She was a little bit hotter there, but hey, still going. Um, the Lake Six do, does come off on this horse. Might be a concern for some people. And um, we'll see on that. But for me, I'm going to pass on this horse, if even if she gets drawn in. Another also eligible, the 12, uh, Goa. Uh, nothing, not much to go off of. Um, I, can't, I didn't get to look, see any of her races. So, but as a Chad Brown horse, you know that's that's a good plus. You got decent, um, solid uh, works on her, you know, in there. She won her last two, but it's been March for her. So I'm going to pass, even if she draws in, and I'll just take a pass and see how she does. And the 13 also eligible. In our time, this horse has been sprinting and now is going a mile. Um, what are we going to see from this horse? Well, if, if this horse gets in, I think you're going to see speed come out a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to probably try to steal it or sit real close and see if she can hang on for that. Uh, for me, I will pass on this horse, even if she gets in. And that's how I see that. And that is... The last horse in this race. And then, so, real quick, um, that was the Lake George. And what we're going to do next is uh, tackle the, uh, the Coaching Club American Oaks, or what is known as CCAO. So, you know, what we're going to do, you know, before we tackle that race, let's go and look at race lens, how they project that Lake George to be run. And here we go. Let's check that one out. All right. Here we go. Well, this is that's the eighth race. Let's go to Lake Georgia, which has been tenth. There we go, tenth race. I'm like, there's something wrong there, but now we got it. Here's the Lake George, one mile turf. Um, in the early stages, they're saying the one's going to be out in front, six and eight right there, even possibly the four ten. Plenty of pressure horses. 
plenty of speed. So these five horses right here, they say it's going to go out there. Um, remember, we even said that we think the 10 could go out. We did say the six has a shot to be a pressure horse, which I believe that would be true right there. The one we said would be a pressure horse, possibly could take the lead. So, so far, I am not going to totally 100% disagree with this chart in the early stages. The middle part of the stage, they're saying the 13 is going to take over. But remember, the 13 is on the also eligible. It goes 11, uh, 12, and 13 are in the also eligible. So in theory, if they don't get in, they're saying that the 8, 6, 1, 2, 4, 7 are going to be really tight, real tight. Now look back here where they say that the 3 has a 46% chance of winning. Now look at the early stages. They have the 3 in dead last, 3 pretty much pre dead last. So they're saying the 3 is going to fly at the end and catch them. I'm not going to totally disagree with them. They have the 12 at 30%. But remember, she's on the also eligible. The 2 at 6%, the 6 at 3.5, and then the 8 at 2.8 chances of winning this race. Here's the odds board. Right now, Right now, they're saying that um, the three should be six to five. The morning line is five to one. They're saying 46% chance of winning. I personally like that horse a lot. I, have, I can't make up my mind between uh, two horses, and that's one of them who could win. The other one is the six for me. I think the six has an excellent shot, but they're saying six to five. That is in their book, true value. And I have to agree with that. This horse at five to one is excellent value. And it it's true value. it's excellent value going all the way down to, for me personally, six to five won't be too bad, but you could get even money maybe even on that maybe. So we'll see. Um, another horse that would be true odds to bet on would be that 12. Remember, they picked it second. Uh, two to one is true odds. That's how they're saying it's true odds. Eight to one is the morning line. You might see some value there. So check that out. Look at this picture. Maybe come back to this when it's live racing. Check and see what you think. But this is what it is. What they're saying, what is true, Raj, and you know, and I've followed this, watching it live is much better than a couple of days before the race. It is, it's so awesome to watch. It will adjust it, especially when you have a couple of scratches in there, it will adjust all of those odds for you. So it's a great tool from Race Lens, and um, it's def definitely worth looking at. All right. So now we're going to go on to the big race, the OOA, no, the CCOAO, <laughs> Coach Coaching Club America Oaks, grade one. And here we go. It's a very short field, so... You can't, can't, you know, honestly, in this race, you can't really, you can't play a trifecta. Um, you can only play a, a exactas only um, in this race. So for me, I'm just going to say, you know, there's either you take one horse on top of someone else as an exacta, but if you really like uh, a long shot in here, just bet it to win and just play it like that. Uh, Candid is the number one horse, five to two. Does this horse have a shot? Definitely. This horse has got some serious talent. Um, ran fourth in a grade one, grade three, um, just behind just FYI. Um, there's some really nice horses. This horse has beaten two. 
and has done very well with. This horse is an excellent horse. Um, Todd Fletcher is your trainer. Franco is your rider. They got a plus and a negative on this. Now, here is where the plus and the negative thing is going to probably come in effect here. You're going to want someone either alone speed on this race or you want someone to sit very close to the base, very close. It's going to be hard to come from behind. Now, if the only way to come from behind, if you have two, possibly three horses, really battling it out and beating each other up big time, uh, which, you know, in this race, I just don't think you're going to get. Um, and they're going a mile and an eighth. So I just, I think they're all smarter than that. They're all going to try to make one the way that their horse runs. That's how they're going to run. Uh, so is this a player? Well, if you like this horse, I'm not going to talk you out of this horse. I think that horse has got an excellent shot. The two, in my opinion, if I was going to pick this race, I would pick this horse to come in fifth. Now, when I said that, now we all know what to jump on and put the money to win on. No. Um, I personally, and out of all the horses in this race, this is the horse that uh, the connections, I personally believe, are reaching or trying for a piece of the pie, trying to get third, trying to become black type in a grade one. That's what I think they're doing here. Another horse that comes from behind, which you're going to see a negative angle there again. Um, but for me, not for me, in my for my money. The three. I don't even know if I need to ex explain this horse much. Torpedo Anna. What a monster. Now, going into uh, the Kentucky Oaks that day, um, McPeak said, kept on saying he had a monster here. Da -da -da, Torpedo Anna is probably better than even all the three year old Colts. And starting to look that way, starting to look like he's right. She has not done anything wrong to make him second guess himself. Does she have speed to go wire to wire? Well, I think that's obvious. She definitely does. She could sit second, second behind somebody, somebody but um, I don't know. I think she's too much. I think she's the class of the whole race. I think you have to beat her. You have to beat her. She is the one to beat. But if you're going to play a pick six, pick five, pick fours, it's either you single her or do not put her on your ticket. It's one of the two. Because she's going to be one to two. I don't even know if that's even true. <laughs> She's going to pay 10 cents to the dollar, maybe. So we'll see. But for me, I think she's a monster. The four, Leslie Rose definitely has a shot. Horse finished second last time behind Torpedo Anna. Um, has run well against other grade one, like just FYI, uh, which was another uh, great horse. But that horse, def just FYI, Lost to Torpedo Anna, so. And this horse will be pace, sitting on the pace a little bit. Uh, second time, uh, one round, second or better last time out at the same track. So basically, they're saying that if you didn't do, you know, that I, I, I'm not going to say much on that one. I think that last race, she did run well. Torpedo Anna is just a monster. I mean, that's, I can't say much more. The five here. Um, this is an interesting horse. This horse, if Torpedo Anna, depends how this race really sets up. I just don't see no one really challenging Torpedo Anna on the front end. This horse could come from behind, but she has proven she could sit very close. Now, if Tyler Gaffleyon could run that race when they did beat Torpedo Anna, sit real close to her, they might have a shot. Might have a shot. And at 8-1, to one, you might want to take that chance. But remember, 
if you're going to play a pick six, pick five, pick four, toss Torpedo Anna, then you play this horse and maybe another horse in this race. Um, but for me, I, I just think Torpedo Anna is too much of a monster for this race. So there we have it on that. And we're going to go and check out the race lens, um, how they see predicted to come out, how they're going to, going to race out um, with the true odds and everything like that. And let's check it out. Race 11 we're looking at. All right. Let's first check this out. They think uh, Thurpino Anna is going to go to the front. Personally, that's how I think. Um, Leslie Rose and the and the five sitting way back. I actually think the five is going to sit real close. I think she's going to sit a very close second or third myself personally. Um, then you have the three. They have them all back. They starting to say in the middle of the race, she's going to be pulling away. Um, I don't know if she's going to be pulling away, but I still see her winning this race by at least a minimum of three lengths. Um, they have her at a 45% chance to one candid, a 43% chance. Yeah. Okay. Definitely a nice horse. Definitely. You know, if torpedo Anna doesn't run her race, yeah, in, I, any of them, ex personally, except for the two, could beat her. Um, they they say the four, second, I mean, third, excuse me, at 6.6, 6, and then the five at 2.6. I, I think they're giving the two a lot of credit at 2.1%, but uh, that's my feelings. And here's your true odds. They're saying that Candid should be 6 to 5. I don't know how you could have – well – Maybe Candy could be six to five by the time this is all over because Torpino Anna is going to be big, dead favorite. So check that out if that seems what you want to do. Um, but for me, I'm just, you know, I think you know, know what I'm going to be doing uh, on my ticket. It's Torpedo. I'm going until she says she's not the best. And you know what? And if she wins here, we might see here in the Travers against the boys, and that'd be pretty interesting. Uh, see how she would match up against some of these boys. She might be able to handle her own against them, so let's wait and see. All right, let's check out the how we are gonna how I'm gonna play it. Basically, I'm gonna try to hit a pick five here on this lovely Saturday at Saratoga. This is what I got. The pick five starts in the uh, eighth race. And I do believe it's a uh, pretty much wide open race. I'm going to take five horses in that race. The two, three, four, five, and the eight. And then in the ninth race, I'm going to take the two, three, six, nine. Now, those four horses are my, that's how I, I see the race in the ninth race going six, two, nine, three. But those are my four horses I'm putting in the pick five. I'm going to personally do a $20 exacta box, not exacta box, excuse me, exacta one way, six on top of the two and the nine. And then in the 10th race, my picks are the six, three, five, two. And I'm going to play those same four horses in my pick five. In that 10th race, I'm going to play a try with the 6-3 on top. Of course, the 6-3 is going to go in the second and third slot automatically. And then I'm going to put the 5-2 in the second slot. And then I'm going to add the 5-2-6 in that third slot. Then in the 10th race, I'm going to do a $10 daily double. I'm going to 6-3-5, and I'm hooking, hooking it up. To, I guess you could guess, Torpedo Anna, the three, um, trying to see which one of those might get me a good price and let's try to get a, a nice little daily double there. Um, the 11th race, I just see Torpedo Anna. 
I'm going to say the four one five. That's how I see it like that after her. Um, I'm going to play a $25 daily double with her on top going to the 10 in the 12th race. So as you can figure out in my pick five, I singled out Torpedo Anna. And then in that final race, I'm pick, taking three horses, the one, three, 10 in my pick five. And in that 12th race, um, I see it as 10, one, three, six. I got a trifecta of the 10, one on top. Of course, the 10, one goes back in the second and third spot. And then we get the three, six, and then I'm going to three, six, five in that third spot. And then I'm going to do a $20 exacta 10, one in that final race, the 12th race at Saratoga. So there is my picks. There is my pick six. And let's go out there and let's get that. All right. So everyone, once again, I want to thank uh, Race Lens uh, for this show and pick it up once in a while. Try it. Try it a couple of times. Go to uh, Equibase. Uh, get a Race Lens. Try out some of these tools, the angles, the charts that show how they figure out the true odd thing um, that shows true odds, especially on live true odds. It's awesome, especially when there's a couple of scratches. It's great. Uh, remember one another thing. If you have any questions for me about anything about gambling, about owning horses, about training, why trainers do certain things, or even about buying horses, go to the sale. Um, I can help you with that, help you buy them, answer all your questions. Just send me an email at charles at passthewire.com. Well, let's go out there and uh, get some winners, huh? What do you say? And I'll see you hopefully in that winner circle real soon. Jackie's Warrior quickly in front here by two lengths. Here comes Jackie's Warrior up the inside to take over the lead from Life is Good. And Jackie's Warrior remains undefeated here at Saratoga, and he wins an unprecedented grade one stakes at the spa for the third straight season. You're watching Pass the Wire TV. Nobody does it better.